Right, well my name is Mary. I was born in London and lived in the southeast of uh, England um, for, during my childhood. I went to college in Newcastle upon Tyne and then uh, moved back to London and then came to South Wales in 1974. So I've been here a long time, but I don't think I really count as Welsh, but my, both my sons are Welsh. Um, and when I retired from my uh, job, I decided I'd like to come and volunteer in Craft in the Bay. So I came here about three years ago now, and I love it. So what uh, made you decide you wanted to volunteer with Craft in the Bay? Actually, um, a friend told me about it and said there were volunteering opportunities and um, Lynn and I used to work together at the hospital and uh, uh, I trusted that she knew what I would enjoy too and so actually we started together and or she had started and I joined her. Um, now we do different days because it's nice to try and help out the organisation by uh, coming on days when they need somebody. So um, it works perfectly really because I look at my diary and decide which days I've got free and I can come and which days they need somebody and uh, so I do two or three days a month, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a bit less. But it suits us both so it's great. That's perfect. Uh, what kind of activities and tasks do you do when you volunteer here? Oh, well Actually, I do all sorts of things when I come here. It's um, sometimes I'm on the floor, sometimes I dust, which is lovely because you can touch things and you have to be very careful because you don't want to break anything. But when the makers come in, they pick up their own work and I think, oh, be careful, you might break it. <laughs> but um, no, it's a treat to actually do the dusting. But um, uh, we also lay work out and, and uh, um, uh, oh, what do I do? All sorts of things. We sell things and, and so we've got to wrap things up and give uh, customers information about the makers and if the maker's actually here, I introduce them to the maker, which is lovely. And um, sometimes we help lay out the new exhibitions because there's a new exhibition about every six weeks here which is interesting. Uh, do you have to do research for the exhibitions? I don't. Um, I, I usually, my research goes as far as asking Charlotte, who's the exhibition manager, what's going on, or Cindy or Simon, but uh, no, I um, I think some of the work experience students do do a bit of internet searching and, and things, but uh, I, I don't like computers. I'm, I'm too old for that, really. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur. So you help more with arranging exhibitions and arranging yeah. displays? Yeah, and, and um, just tidying up because things get... Um, you know, moved around and, and not displayed at their best. So I go around and sort of just uh, make sure that everything looks good and fill gaps where we've sold things and people haven't had a chance to restock from the stock rooms. Um, oh, there's loads of things to do. <laughs> what would you say are your favorite activities? Um, actually, talking to customers. I, I like that. I, I sometimes know the customers. Some, some, some of them are people that I've worked with or who I recognise from Cardiff and, and uh, um, it's, so that's a lovely surprise. Um, but I love meeting the makers and, and working with them because they chat about what inspires them or um, how they make things and it's really interesting it's such a privilege sort of just hearing how they do things and some of them are very very modest and they they shouldn't be because <laughs> they do wonderful things they do yes yeah we get quite a lot of people who come in from London who come down for say the Welsh National Opera or something and um, they'll come in here in the afternoon 
um, and they just think this is so lovely because compared with gallery prices in London, the prices here are good. Um, they do seem expensive to some people because it's, you know, it's, it's artworks, but, um, you know, that's, that it, well, we get coach loads in sometimes. You get uh, trips from different parts of the country, but we also have visitors from all over the world who um, call in, which is lovely. That's interesting. I always check up where they're from and <laughs> what they're doing and if they're enjoying Cardiff. And we're quite a good service for pointing out where to go next. <laughs> Do you help with any of the workshops that take place here? No, I don't. The um, I don't. I wouldn't trust myself to do much in the way of helping creatively. <laughs> um, I help with. Um, I'm on the friends committee, um, and uh, we plan friends um, activities, which is mainly. Um, afternoon meetings for Meet the Maker, when we have a maker come and talk to us about how they got into it, what inspires them, how they do it, that sort of thing. I usually make the cakes and uh, we give them tea and coffee in this conference room here and uh, that's three, four, five times a year. But we also do um, studio visits, which are good, uh, to some of the local makers. Um, yeah, just, just, um, friends, the friends group is quite small and we've always tried to sort of, um, increase numbers, but it's, it's a nucleus of people, I don't know how many are on it, about 80 people that are friends, right. so we're relatively and small. You, and but you have regular meetings? We do, but, um, just as when we need them really, when we need to do some more planning, Simon usually calls it and Desmond, the uh, uh, chair, um, yeah, we just get together up here usually. Yeah. Um, would you say that uh, volunteering with um, Craft in the Bay has made you um, closer uh, to the community? Well, I used to be a social worker, so I was pretty close to the community then, and, and uh, I worked with lots of voluntary organisations then. So, um, when I first retired, I actually worked with Age Concern, um, and I think volunteering has just been part of, you know, accepting that it's a, it's a good thing to do, I enjoy it, I like meeting people, keeps my brain active and it's really interesting so yeah. Uh, what sort of activities would you do with Age Concern? Oh I helped in a, a charity shop um, sorting, sorting out things, selling things it was I, just because I knew what a lot of good work they used to do uh, for some of the patients that I knew um, I just wanted to help out and it was just fun I'm retired. I retired so that I could play full time. So I play full time, as it were, doing voluntary work and lots of other things. What other voluntary work do you do? Nothing. No, apart from looking after my grandson once <laughs> once a week. I, I can, that's voluntary work too, but it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Have you volunteered with other organisations in the past? Um, no, because I've always been extremely busy. <laughs> Um, yeah. No, I think when you're a social worker and you work sort of 10 hours a day, you don't feel you've got anything left. You've got to, you've got to re recharge your own batteries, really, uh, and, and look after the children and the house and everything. So, yeah. Um, in the charity shop uh, with Age Concern, what would, what would a day at um, the charity shop look like? Oh, gosh. Um, well, their shops have closed now because they they were um, they were having to sort of regroup and things. But um, 
what would it look like? Well, actually, when you're volunteering, day, the days aren't routine. That's part of the joy of uh, volunteering. It, everything is very different, and, and um, you can be asked to sort of sort out bags of donations, or you can be sorting books, or you can be arranging. Um, I quite enjoyed the sort of um, laying out of the window displays. It was a bit of me that I hadn't really explored before, sort of just looking at colours and, and sort of shapes and uh, um, yeah, doing a window display that was eye-catching out of stuff that we'd been given, which is quite a challenge sometimes because you don't get given quite the right things, but uh, it's a, it was nice to find things that worked and uh, caught people's eye. Yeah. Was that uh, in any way similar to the work you're doing with Craft in the Bay? I suppose the sort of colours, uh, yes, I have to check that things go nicely or, um, yeah, there's a slightly artistic element about that, but uh, probably that's the most. <laughs> We're very careful to wrap things up very beautifully <laughs> in Craft in the Bay. You, you don't get a chance to wrap things up, particularly in a charity shop. That's true, yeah. yes. Um, what about memories of volunteering, which would be the best moments that come to mind or events that you've taken part in? Um, oh, some, some of the makers um, who've been in a, a, to meet the makers uh, sessions have been so interesting. Um, I've really, I, well, I can't say I haven't enjoyed any of those. I've really, really enjoyed them all. Um, but bumping into people here uh, and you get chatting and discover that you've got friends in common, that, you know, and you think, well, what a small world it is. Um, yeah, and I just enjoy every day when I'm here. That's great. Um, could you tell me also um, if volunteering has affected any other areas in your life? So family life or maybe, I wouldn't say career because this is I'm too old for fun. a career. I certainly don't it's want any more careers, you. thank you. <laughs> um, Have you inspired any other members of your family to volunteer as well? Um, no, because they've got their hands full with small children now. Um, but. I suppose talking to friends in my book circle or um, my ladies who lunch group and things like that, they've not realised that Craft in the Bay do take volunteers. And so, you know, they sometimes thought, I've explained how it works and that you don't have to commit to one or two days a week regularly, you, that you can fit in with how um, you're needed. Um, so I think that does attract people. I don't know whether it's actually resulted in people joining the organisation and, and, and coming in, but... Uh, um, it, yeah. it has made it better known. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm always... I do actually email things on to people and sort of say, we've got a meeting, come and, come and, you know, come and meet the maker and see if you'd like to join the organisation. Um, would you say volunteering changed you in any way? Um, changed me? Well, gosh, probably, but I'd, um, uh, ooh, I suppose it broadened my horizons, because when you're in a career, a lifelong career, you ha you, you know, it takes you down certain paths, doesn't it, and, and, um, so it's brought me into a much more creative world uh, where people have wonderful imaginations and uh, creativity. So I suppose that's, yeah, it's just broadened my horizons. Yeah. Um, do you think your volunteering impacts the wider community or I think contributes in one way or another to society? 
Do you know, I used, when I was working, I thought that um, the newly retired uh, actually kept society going <laughs> because so many organisations relied on volunteer and voluntary staff to do all the extras that would be lovely to do if you, f professionals would like to do but don't have time to do. Um, and um, cutbacks have meant that certainly in local authority services and some of the public services, you can't do all the things that uh, we used to do or, or, or that people would like to do. So um, voluntary organisations add that sort of extra, which is so lovely. Yeah. Um, when you were a social worker, you mentioned you worked with a couple of charity organisations and volunteer organisations. Mm. Could you describe some of those collaborations, give examples? Oh gosh, well I mean I, I worked in a hospital setting so we used to have people come in who were homeless or who had drug dependency or who needed linking up with all sorts of organisations. Um, we also had people who were frail and elderly who lived on their own and so we'd link them up with age concern. Um, I worked with a group of people who um, had haemophilia and other viral problems so there were a lot of organizations that we linked in with um, actually if you've got a wide range of um, voluntary organizations in your head as a social worker you can link people up with all sorts of services that might help and do some of the things that you you haven't got time to do yourself and uh, um, so I just think that adds to the quality of the service you can offer, really, um, to signpost people to other services. Um, yeah. Did you ever follow up on any of the cases? So you linked people uh, with certain organisations. Did you get a chance? Oh, to some people I knew lifelong, so I did know whether uh, you know it whether helped. Whether that helped. Yes. Or not. Yeah. 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 Yes. So there's a lot of, I mean, there's loads of medical charities, and I mostly worked in the health setting. So, um, you know, linking people in with the MS Society or Parkinson's Disease Society or any of the organisations that support people with um, health problems and their carers um, could be useful. Um, it didn't suit everybody, but it did suit some. So, uh, yeah. Um, what does volunteering mean to you? Volunteering would mean to me... Um, I think probably I'm sort of fairly socially aware and, and, and it... You just want to do a bit that will help. It's... it's um, it, it actually helps you as well as um, helps other people. Um, but it's, I, I enjoy sort of, um, oh, what does it, that's too difficult. No, I can't answer that. No worries. <laughs> Can you tell me how volunteering helped you, for example, just little day-to-day -day examples? Oh, well, when you retire, um, you go from being extremely busy, full time, sort of 50 hours a week, whatever, um, to not working. And the first few weeks seems like a holiday. And then you think, gosh, I've got to organise my time. <laughs> and so um, volunteering along with playing badminton or doing all sorts of other things, um, it becomes part of the structure of the week. And, and adds variety to uh, your life. And um, so, yeah, it helped me structure uh, life when uh, there'd been a great big change. Much as I love being retired, it's, you've still got to organize your own time. Uh, so, yes, that was a contribution to that. Yeah. That's lovely. Do you want to add anything else? And I think you've quizzed me to death. <laughs> Yeah, Laura, do you have any questions? <laughs> then I want to give you another very difficult one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I would just think if 
get, we were trying to gather different definitions of volunteering because mm -hmm. it means different things to different people. And that's kind of what I was getting at with the question of what does volunteering mean to you? So like a definition, it doesn't have to be the emotional aspect of right. what it means to you. Yeah. What does it mean to me? That, that, that's it's actually... <laughs> How would you define it? Volunteering. Yeah. Giving your time um, to an organisation that needs your time, really. And um, I actually probably wouldn't volunteer for an organisation that I didn't value and want to help. Um, and there are loads of wonderful <laughs> organisations and a lot of charities that um, I wouldn't necessarily support because I tend to go for the human charities. Um, uh, but who do good work and I just think, well now my time is my own, I, I can do exactly what I like so I'll do this. <laughs> Very good input, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. <laughs>